How's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in to another great episode of the Sportsman's Journal. Today, we're on Lake of the Woods, and we're gonna fish one of my favorite fish, big slab crappies. It is one of your favorites. I get excited for them. We are staying at Tamarack Island Wilderness Lodge with the Hacko family as our host. And because the fall fishing is really so good. it's so good, yep. uh, we had to target slow down and target one species. We did. We, we had we just pulled the name out of the hat and it happened to be crappies. Mm -hmm. Tyler's favorite, so he can show off. Yeah. I do good on crappies. I was gonna say <laughs> the only name in the hat was crappies. And the thing about on Lake of the Woods is the secret is out. Everybody knows the, the crappie fishing is, is good. So yep. there's highly pressured areas. We're going to show you some key tactics to do to catch bigger fish. Yes. And we're going to show you a cool little thing with a double jig rig on plastics. We catch a lot of nice crappies. So everybody stay tuned for some great crappie action at a lake of the woods. We'll see you right back here after a word from our sponsors. This segment of Sportsman's Journal is brought to you by Coleman Insect Repellents. Jabrowski. Get started off. A little double jig rig here. Oh wow, look at that guys. Not Let a bad see. starter. Not a bad starter fish. Oh geez. Yeah, don't need nice a net, one. but it's a nice one. Come here, buddy. Oh, he's not hooked good. I have to do my best lip don't, job. Don't oh. blow it. There we go. Nice work. Folks, first cast at Tamarack Island. Start the morning off right. For crappies, did not take long. Beautiful fish, look at that. Awesome. We're gonna be catching a lot of crappies today and we're gonna tell you exactly what we're doing to catch these nice slabs. This is awesome. We look forward to this every year. Yes, we do. I'm excited. First one Ooh, of the day goes back in. Big slabberudo. Sure does. Put them back. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, slab crappie, I believe. Oh, you Feels think decent. it's a big, it's big a one? one? That's a nice one. Not a baby, I nope. can tell you that much. No, nope, not a baby. Borderline swinger. Ah. Let's take a look. Again, on that double, that, that bottom jig. What the heck oh, was wow. That? I don't, Fish not, jumping over yeah, there. Yeah, not really sure. Fish all over the place. <laughs> What's going on over there? Not a bad one. I think I'm going to eat him. What you decided. Yep. Poor guy. He's perfect. He's gonna meet his maker later. Ugh. Ooh. Not super duper small. He's got a little pole there. Oh. This is a nice one here. Now. Not stupid. We're using plastics. Coming over on your side. And I got a double, I like to call it double jig rig. But that one right there, he hit the top jig. And what makes it important why you, sometimes you want to use that double jig rig? First of all, weight. When you're casting micro stuff, adds a little more weight to your cast so you can get them out further. Second of all, there are a ton of fish down there and competition is super high. So the more offerings you can put in front of their face, they go crazy after. It's a good eater. What do you got? Oh, I got a nice one. Holy cow, yes you do. Were you just gonna catch him in stealth mode or what? Well, you were busy talking. Oh, I appreciate that. Thought I'd let you have your glory. Do I need to get the net for him? Let me grab him for you, huh? Oh, wow. There you go. That Lots one put me on the board. Jeez, oh, Pete, look yeah, at that. look at that. I knew that uh, Tyler was hogging the spot, so I passed out there. <laughs> you creeped in right behind me. Oh, yeah. Like these guys. And I got this lovely fish right That's here. That's a dandy. Alright, let's put him back. Look at this, Sarah. Oh my gosh, you got another one already? <laughs> they are coming in fast. I'm telling you what. There is a lot of places 
in the North Country that have crappies. But fall crappie by in Lake of the Woods is unbelievable. Yeah, we're back. We're back <laughs> we for a, a second time. round. This is unreal. Just big slabs after big slabs. I love it. It's going in the live well. What is going on? I've caught one fish. Oh. You're hogging the whole spot. I'm telling you, it's a double jig rig. This guy's acting a little goofy. He's oh. got he's got something wrong with him. No, he's normal, normal crappie. Swing man. <sighs> he's got some shoulders on him. Pale, pale colored. That water's. They are very dirty pale. Up. When we got here, Tamarack, the day before we showed up, seven inches of rain over the last two days prior to our arrival. Of course, we're, we're post frontal. Yeah, we're we're always post frontal, no matter what. So. <laughs> We should change the show to Sportsman's Journal Post Frontal. <laughs> just the way it works out. Just the way it works. We're always fishing after cold fronts. But you know what? We always seem to catch fish. Well, I always seem to catch fish. Uh -huh. Sarah always seems to be around with me, which is okay. I gotta be support staff. Yep. You're my hype, hype chick. Oh, <laughs> you're hype man? No, I'm not. Then you're... I'd have to give you hype. We mentioned before the fact that we got here just after a huge torrential downpour, all the creeks coming into Lake of the Woods are flooded and brown. And driveways were washed out driveways on the way in. Out, highways were closed. So one of the things that tells us right away is that the water is going to be a little dirtier, especially on Lake of the Woods, which has a lot of rivers and feeder creeks to it. Even though it's a million acre system, the water is kind of stained in Todd's area of the lake where Tamarack's located to begin with. And with that rain, we knew it was going to be a little more dingy. So and the double jig rig. And on bigger, top of that, the algae bloom. And the algae bloom, yeah. And so the double jig rig helps there in the fact that it's more bulky. There's more stuff in the water to get their attention. Sarah's using a little bit bigger soft plastic, a um, little bigger jig head. And there's a lot of people out here vertical jigging with live bait and tiny little jigs. But I think the key is for big fish, you go bigger, you go home. Sarah just missed one. So she's probably going home. But that double jig rig and that bigger soft plastic, especially in this dirty water that we're working with now, that's helping us catch a lot of these crappies that a lot of people aren't getting hits. There he is. Oh, yeah, this is a nice one. Better one? Yeah, this is a good fish. Way out there. I don't think I'm gonna need the net on him, but it's a dandy. I got a small one. You got one too? Small one. Yeah. Small one. Oh, look at this. This way I felt like it was bigger. Oh, wow. That's how we do it. Jeez, Tyler. Strikes again. Uh, nice. So we actually have triples going on. We got now. triples. <laughs> That's not a bad one, Sarah. No, it's not. Normal. Third. Good year class twins, right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Exactly when I'm talking about double jig rig. I call it a double jig rig. I picked this up fishing farm ponds in Iowa growing up. The more lures you can get in the water, the more fish you catch. But what I got here, I got a little bit lighter jig up top. That's a 132nd. And down here I have a 116th ounce jig head. And I got them tipped with two inch power minnows, but any type of soft plastic will work, especially minnow imitation type bait. And in between I got about two foot line and I just tie one, I give my, I tie the top jig on first and I give myself a pretty big lead here, about 24 inches of slack. Then I tie my other one to the tail end of that. And that's all you need. And both of them do perfect in the water. Both of them look really good, especially when you're bringing them back. They bring, they have that little, that little tiny flick as you're bringing it through and they stay horizontal, which is nice. You don't want them to be vertical like this, especially when you're bringing it towards the boat. So that helps out a lot. And they're catching some fish. There we go. Ooh, this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again, but it feels better. I wonder if I got two on again. <laughs> well, that's just not fair. No, no, I only got one on this time. Again, not a giant. They're fighting good though. It's a good crappie. It's a good crappie. 
I think he's gonna make it to the his final destination is gonna be the frying pan. You think so? Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep him. Put him in there with the rest of them. So we've been talking a lot about keeping that presentation horizontal as you're bringing it. You can see my knot has slipped since I caught that fish. You wanna make sure your knot placement is right on top and that lure is gonna sit just like this, not like that. So you want it to be horizontal with the bottom just like that and that's perfect. So every now and then check that knot placement, make sure it's right in the middle of the jig head so it's facing vertical and that's gonna keep your lure in the right spot as far as presentation every time you cast out. So check that after every fish because that knot will move a little bit on the eye of the jig head. And you want it to be perfectly parallel up and down with the line. You don't want it to be sitting off to the front because then you're just going to be pulling it. You want to be able to just jig it. So you want bit. it perpendicular to the line. Perpendicular? What did I say? Parallel? Shabby. Ooh. 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 Got one on my double rig jig rig. Yeah, you did. Which one did you hit the bottom? Yeah, hit the bottom. So I had to give in and go with Tyler's technique because he was kicking my butt. And uh look at that. I think we're one to one now since I put this on. Are neck and neck. Tied up, are we? The battle is real. Oh wow. I really set the hook on that guy. Million dollar hook set. I wasn't losing. <laughs> Gonna have to pause for a moment. So, I think we're one to one now, but he's gonna go back in the drink. Ooh. Ooh. I think I got a decent one here. Of Do course, you? I say that a lot. Yeah. Oh, he's not that big. Yeah, I hear that quite a bit from Tyler. I think every fish is decent. Subst They're not bad. Do you remember when you used to yell substantial every oh, time you'd catch them? I used to say, yeah. So I used to catch a lot of fish that I always thought were big. Every fish I have on, I think. Is well, we had, to, we had to have a rule about if you have to get but the I net But I used to always not. yell substantial. To get the net. And that was the sign to get the net. And he used to say it every single time he had a fish on. <laughs> Substanch! Substanch, yeah, it was abbreviated because I had to say it so much, so it was just quicker mm. to say substanch. And then it got cut to stanch. Right, yeah, and then, I, and then I learned, and then I learned don't listen to him because yeah. it's not. So now every time I say substantial, nothing happens with my <laughs> boat partner. No, he actually I has just, to prove I it. I just get a grimace. He actually has to prove it. Could be substantial. on. Yours? Yeah, I think I have two on again. Listen to Tyler. I don't oh. know. Oh. I think I have two on again. That ain't a shabby one. I think I do have two. No, I have one. <clears throat> Just one this time. Maybe you shouldn't be so greedy. No. That's not a bad one. There we go. Got him on that top jig again. Pretty. No, I don't think it's huge. No? I don't think so. Your eagle friends are coming to say hi. Oh, there they are. Get that rod tip up. How much higher do you want me to go? <laughs> Goodness. That's not a shabby one. On the middle again? Yeah. So we kept in touch with Todd the last couple of weeks. We uh, we had a general trip planned. We kept in touch with Todd on uh, when the crappies were moving and, and where they were. Todd's really good about letting everybody know what's going on. That's a tiny little guy. But, uh, cause we thought we'd try our trip a little bit earlier this year. Cause I don't know if you guys remember, but I remember being freezing in the boat. It wasn't that bad. No, it was not good. So we, we had uh, our striker gear on. We, we were did. Cozy. So we, uh, pushed it up a little bit this year so we could have a little bit nicer weather, but, uh, looks like the secret's out. Yeah. Everybody knows about the crap. <laughs> Todd said people are there, so there's gotta be fish. Yeah. So we got down here ASAP. Ooh. Better. There's a little bit of weight here on this one. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He is feisty. 
the big thing here, guys, you got a lot of pressure here on this particular spot. And almost every single person out here is vertical jigging, right directly underneath the boat. And you catch fish, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Not the big ones like these guys. That is a big calico right there. The key with these, and we found this out last year by just experimenting. But this year with that high water, dirty water, bulk up your jigs a little bit, but get your presentation away from the boat. Those fish have seen tons of boats sitting on here. These fish have moved in here since probably mid to late August, and here we're late September. So those fish have seen a lot of boats, a lot of pressure. And in order to get yourself these big crappies, you need to fish away from the boat, pitch it out. Um, drift fishing, you can do that too, but that's again, you catch a lot of little ones, you're not catching these big ones. We see guys, they're catching lots of fish, but I haven't seen anybody getting a 12 inch yet, that's for sure. And this is a nice crappie. Sarah? What's up? Good eats or no? This is a beautiful fish. Love it, love it. I let's think you should take low. a picture. All right, let's get this one in there. Oh, 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 look at that. Excited. Little guys, you can see right now underneath the boat, there are a ton of fish. So I'm just gonna drop her down there. And this is what most people are doing out here. And trust me, it works. Guys are catching fish here. You just drop it down. We're in 25 foot. So guys are just vertical jigging, but I'm gonna show you what happens when you vertical jig compared to what we're doing. Just let's sit, there's a fish there already. Oh my gosh, look at this. Well, this is why sometimes you do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that's the reason for the double jig rig. Look at that. Need some help over there? Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> that's classic. <laughs> that's Tyler Trampy's uh, fish and touch right there. Yeah. Little guy. Little guy. Right underneath the boat. But like I said, they're stacked up there and you could do that all day long. But we want to catch big ones. And trust me, there's fish here. Todd says he, every year he gets people getting crappies up to 15 inches, 16 inches sometimes. Those are big fish. Underneath the rig fish right here. This is what most people are catching, vertical jig as it just did right there. The key to the big ones is get away from the rig. And what helps me get away from the rig? Kramer Custom Rods, brand new. The TI, his X11 series, TI is his super light rod. This one happens to be a seven foot ultralight allows me to get away from the boat quick and I get great hook sets because I pull up a lot of line with that longer rod. If you're vertical jigging, a shorter rod better because you get more leverage on hook sets. The other thing nice about this ultralight rod is that the tip is a little whippy, but it's not super, 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 super noodly. It's got enough whip so I can cast those small baits. But I'm getting really far from the boat here and that's helping us get these bigger fish because like I said, the pressure is so immense here that you have to have technique that the fish haven't seen. So bringing the lures kind of more horizontal instead of vertical is what catches these big crappies. He's down there. A couple some little thumps there. Ooh, that ain't shabby. Mm -mm. There you go. That's a decent one. That is a decent one. Came up and whomped her. Came up and whomped her. Ah. Hungry, hungry. That ain't a bad one right there. Let's see if I can do a good enough job here with the old swing them in here. There we go. That's a nice crappie. There are just hundreds and hundreds of crappies down there. All about this size. 10, 11, 12s. Got a couple 13s already mm -hmm. today. The sun's gonna get a little bit lower and they're gonna turn on here. We're gonna get some more, some more big dogs, but that is a perfect eater right there. You don't want to keep those 12, 13s. Those are your egg producers, but these 10, 11s. Good eats, perfect size for the frying pan. That's where he's going. Sarah, we had another amazing day at a Tamarack Island Wilderness Lodge. We caught a lot of fish. The crappie fishing is 
amazing here in the fall. It is. Starts in August, goes all the way through November. Todd's open the whole time. If you haven't fished for crappies on Lake of the Woods, you need to get up here, take advantage of it. There's a lot of fish and there's a lot of big fish. It, we had an amazing time. Um, it didn't matter that we had some weather cells. Just prepare, have what you need in the boat, and you make can sure stay out yep, all day. Yep, make sure you get your bibs on you. Yeah. And because we're in the mecca of fishing here at Lake of the Woods, right, we we're going to go out and tackle some other species just for fun. Can we go musky fishing? We can. I think we're going to do that. Everybody, thanks for watching this week's episode. We'll see you next week on Sportsman's Journal. To plan your next trip to Lake of the Woods, give Todd a call at 204-792-2097 or check him out on the web at TamarackIslandWildernessLodge.com. Can't get enough of the Sportsman's Journal? Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Also check out our website, sportsmansjournaltv.com.